force, those will come up in evidence if people make reports. So I'd encourage witnesses to do that. It will be investigated, and most likely the police officers will be cleared of wrongdoing because that's just how our system works at, at the current time. We need to fight against that and fight for a civilian review board to hold the police accountable. Um, and we just need to keep working on it. As a city, we need a consent decree with the Department of Justice eventually to work on this police brutality issue because none of us are safe in this city where the police and the government can brutalize us, send us to Jackson Pike, we can be tortured, um, and then they're even doing this to the most vulnerable people in our society. Um, it's unbelievable. So um, they have stuck up for us, so we need to stick up for them. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathleen DeMinor, and um, so uh, I feel like I have a, a, a vision of half of what happened, but not the other. So actually, tonight, things are getting filled in, blank spots that I didn't know about. But I had gone down on Thursday at noon time to the rally in front of Portman's office. Um, I find myself at this point unemployed after one week and so, you know, it's like, oh, I don't work for New Camp, Ohio, I can do what I want and I don't have to worry about how it's going to reflect on my employer. So, um, I had a mind that I would probably go in uh, and face arrest, but I hadn't fully decided. And, um, and then at a certain point, uh, we decided it was time to go in. It was around 1, one o'clock or so in the afternoon. Uh, there were about, I don't know if any of you who have been down there probably know that the routine is that if, you're, if you want to go up to Portman's office, five people can go up at a time. And so they had these badges, and they had five people had gone up, and I, I was one of the five, but then some other folks knew how to you know, park in the garage, go down the basement, go up the elevators, and never actually see the uh, person who's sitting there taking up. So we really had about, um, I think probably eight or nine people in the office, and we, um, several of them had to leave, and so around four, it kind of, 4 p.m., and it settled down to about five of us, and we were prepared to um, to refuse to leave at five o'clock when the office closed, and we just figured we're going to be arrested, and, you know, and so... Um, uh, <laughs> at 5 o'clock, right before 5 o'clock, one of the folks that was leaving, uh, I, since I was going to be arrested, I thought, I really don't want to have my cell phone because I really don't want the police like, looking through my cell phone. So I just gave it to this other person and kept his number and told him to get a hold of Doug. And so then the head of security came out and said, well, um, you guys are free to stay as long as you want. Um, in this waiting area, there's the hallway up and down the hall that uh, you can't go in. You can't, if you go out, you can't come back in. Nothing comes in, nothing gets sent out. Um, there's a bathroom, there's a water fountain. And so basically, we had the most minimal uh, needs taken care of. So it was really kind of a surprise to us, you know, like ready to get arrested and then find out, oh, we have to stay here all night without dinner and without a very nice place to sleep. So um, we did, and then we knew by the morning, um, some folks were you know, in better touch than I was, um, that a dad was going to come in around 9 o'clock. And I felt pretty comfortable leaving. I had some things that I really needed to do on Friday. And so um, I did leave. And I went home and I couldn't find the Facebook live feed. And I was tired and I went to sleep. And so all the things you guys were talking about, I was actually sleeping for a little bit. So I guess I just want to say a couple of things about um, about Portman and what I think we have to do right now. Um, clearly, I mean, there's, it's, I mean, everybody knows that he's avoiding, you know, talking to his constituents. As we talk to his staff, they kept saying, he's out in the public. Yesterday he was here, and then he was there, and then he was there. And we said, yes, but none of these events are noticed in advance so that the public can come. And, um, and, and this was kind of a fruitless argument that was going back and forth um, between some of us and, and his staff. Um, so I do think that the need to put pressure is absolutely 
Uh, he was real strong pressure on him. He does, he is going to be a trigger pro. One of the things that I think we have to not let that, let, let the media do, uh, or Portman uh, or staff do, is to try to frame this as something from the outside. Um, there was one person in our group who had, had driven down from Flint, and he came down because he's an activist and he feels really strongly about this issue. And both of the senators in Michigan are Democrats and will um, oppose the bill. And so he wanted to come to Ohio because he said basically Portman is going to make a difference for everybody in the country. And I think that's the thing we have to understand. He is now playing a role as, as if he were the speaker or as if he were the president of the Senate or something. And so when people come from New York or people come from Flint or wherever they come from, they have a stake in it and they have a right to be here too. So we have to really, you know, hold that up. And I think the other thing is we just got to make sure people are calling and calling and calling, you know, to vote no um, and to keep demanding that you hold public meetings that his constituents can come to. So, that's all I really have to say, unless anybody else. Hi. Um, is anybody who's here as a provider for the Medicare and Medicare other than me? All right, so I'm the only Hillary voter and also a provider for Medicare and Medicare. <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that um, you know, it's a very difficult provider, uh, as a provider, a healthcare provider. Medicaid and Medicare. I lost many of my colleagues a few years ago with uh, affordable care. They got out of uh, Medicaid and Medicare. I'm holding on to that, and currently I provide a lot of pro bono um, health care, medical care for activists and artists and poets and activists and that. But I will be able to afford to provide um, Medicare and Medicaid people. I mean, you know, I have to live too. And so I would like you to also understand many of us also need to make choices. That's all I have to say. So thank you.